Respond to you then. Such a big blessing to have the other subhanAllah. How many people are just not committing themselves to Islam? They're very weak in their worship to Allah and very lazy. I don't know what's going on with the Ummah. SubhanAllah. This is one of the diseases of the hearts of the Ummah. People are not attached to the worship of Allah Taala. They're lacking in their commitment to the deen. It's a beautiful deen that Muhammad Sallallahu brought for us. I don't know, subhanAllah. It's a damn time. I need to meet Zakaria. Should I? I'm going to come in just in a few minutes. I can still get some time. I know what, man. I don't want to be like, like these people. I should. 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 go to Salah right now. I made my wudu and pray some. Allah will remove your fear. Imagine it is a place to be. It's where the children are safe and free. Subhanallah, I don't understand why today, as soon as the Imam says, Salaam alaikum, Salaam alaikum, people like get up like a spring and just out. There's a problem. Subhanallah, it's, it's as if people just want to get out of the mosque, you know? It's like you wait. I, it's sometimes even before the Imam says, you know, finishes the, the salam, it's like they're out. Time. I don't know what's the problem because, you know, and it's, it's almost as if people don't take interest in that the sunnah after salah, the nafil after salah that you need to recite and that, you know, or sitting in the masjid and just, you know, uh, sitting and, re- and, and just keeping uh, until, uh, you know, the time finishes. I don't know. It's almost like... Um, Prayer and you know the deen is just let's do it, Annie. But let's just get over with and we're out, you know. Like let's get back to the to the dunya. 
the same thing I was thinking like it's almost as if a person says you know I've got this barge on my shoulders when he hears the adhan like oh subhanallah I have this big this burden on my shoulders it reminds me of something you know, you know it's like when you're in a school right and you get, you're doing your classes as soon as you hear the bell it's like you're out of the class it's the thing, <laughs> same thing with salah you know yes, so yes, it's man. basically when the adhan comes you're like oh there's it again I need to recite salah and you know, it's like a then, burden, huh? you know, and it's almost as if they, they don't even go immediately. You know, mm-hmm. they don't. It's that laziness that builds in you. They don't even go immediately to the mosque. They wait, and he, he looks at his watch and he says, mm-hmm. "Okay, there's still 15 minutes left before the ikama." You know, and then it's he like comes, you calculate every minute. I can do this two minutes, three, three, four. I can and he still comes there. late for the ikama. Right. And you know, uh, sometimes uh, it's so sad. Sometimes some guys wait for the imam if he's reciting a long surah. He's like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to wait bit. for him. Let him just come to the last ayah, and then I'll. But I, I've seen that as I go into the masjid, I see a lot of youth sometimes just waiting till like the imam makes ruku, and then they'll jump in to catch the first rakah. And then, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, this, uh, what's the problem? I mean, what's what's this this disease or this these symptoms that we're seeing in in people when it comes to commitment to the salah? Or to tell you the truth, this all comes from laziness, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, a major part of this here is laziness from the inner, you know, inner spirituality. Right. You know, basically, because many of the times we find like a person is healthy, he's 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 young, he has his youth in him, he has power, he he, he can recite salah in that but it's because of we have forgotten that the most important part is that a person supposed to feed his inner soul that's where you need to strengthen it that's mm. where when you strengthen your inner soul when you hear the azan you're like subhanallah i have to get the first surf mm. you know yeah. that's when you when you feed the inner soul when 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 salah finishes you're like oh i'm going to recite all my sunnah I'm going to recite some Quran. I'm going to sit in the masjid for a while. You know, that's where a person uh, does the lack because I, th- I think that we we don't see our deen as something beneficial. Rather, we see it as something that we have to do, or if we don't do, it's kind of like a safety, you know, mechanism. You know, we we should pray, but we'll pray like the bare minimum because. It might be that we might suffer if we don't pray, or we might be punished or something. You know? It's not that, hey, you know what? I hear the adhan. I should reply to the adhan. I should move to the salah, and I should benefit from this salah. You know, and like, it's when we look at it from their perspective, that we're gaining something. But it seems like today is just that, you know, uh, let me just have a kind of like a insurance, you know. Right? It might be that I'll get punished or that I'll suffer from this. So let me get it over with mm-hmm. and I've done it, you know. Right? And subhanAllah, you said such an important thing in this year that I should answer to this. Some of them don't, uh, some of us don't even answer when the uh, azan the is being called. Phone, you laughing, know, he's on his cell joking. phone, he's not worried. <laughs> you know, he's just like, okay, that's azan. Some of them don't even reply the dua after azan. Mm-hmm. And you know, the, the sad part is this is everywhere. Everywhere. And, and the beautiful thing, subhanAllah, uh, in Islam, that small things that you do can really, you know, benefit you a lot and can really, subhanAllah, save you from, you know, hellfire. Mathalan, we have uh, the adhan, and then after the adhan, the dua. And this dua can earn you the shifa of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he said. Right? If you repeat a mother, and you say, it's a small thing, it can be done. You know? But yet, what is the reward, the shifa of Rasul Sassan? How many do it? How many will get it? Not too many. You know, subhanAllah, so, it's almost as if it's a wave amongst the youth. You know, like you, you find a disease, like laziness, for example, in today's time, a person not having uh, the energy to, 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 he's not looking forward to recite his salah. Yeah. And he's, if the Imam recites a long, uh, a long surah in salah, he's like, oh, you know, when is he going to finish with this? You know, I, I just want to get out of Salah. I just need... It's almost as if this is its a wave that it's, it, it affects most of the youth all over. You know? You said something very interesting about the inner self and strengthening that Iman. Now, um, how, can we, how can we do that? I mean, this is one aspect of laziness, uh, that inner, you know, that inner side. We're lacking the Iman. Like, how can we, we, we change that? You know, basically... Many people will tell you, okay, do this, do that, okay, recite this, uh, recite that. But it actually comes from a person should, basically you bring two qualities. Mainly a person should try and start off small. Well, yeah. Because small I don't know if you've noticed, I always say the examples, you, you learn from examples. For example, if you go to a gym and you say, I want to train. Mm. <laughs> say, for example, you... you if you, if you start off with heavy weights or heavy, you know, heavy training and that, the next day you won't come back. 
because why the pain you know you you exerted yourself right. in that you know lactic acid builds up uh, but the person if he starts off slowly he starts off with something small but he keeps steadfastness you know he's steadfast on that right. you know al istiqama which is most important this is so more beloved small, to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's more beloved yeah. to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so do small big. But keep steadfast. Keep it, you know, for example, say for today, this whole week, I'm going to try and come to the masjid and get the first surf. Did, you know? Mm -hmm. So basically, after a while, when you see it's a habit in you, that you come into the, uh, to, 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 to the masjid and you're always, you know, in the first surf. So then you start saying, okay, now I've got the first surf. I've got it steadfast in me. You know, I've got it. it, 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 it no matter what I'm doing, automatically when the azan goes, I make myself prepare myself to get the first off. Mm. If I don't get the first off, you know, it, 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 should, it, hurt. it, it, it should hurt. It, it <laughs> like, should. You know, I, I feel like out of place, you know. Right. So, subhanAllah, you know that this quality is in you now, you know. It's amazing. And he so, said, uh, this is the inner laziness that we should get rid of. This is the inner and laziness. Islam is, is the deen that gets the perfect balance between the inner spiritual aspect and the outer physical aspect. Now, uh, of course, uh, you know, and we'll return back to the spiritual aspect in a moment so we don't lose train of thought, but going to the physical aspect now, we find a lot of times the youth and the Muslims in general are really unhealthy, out of shape, and this really contributes to laziness because it's, it's not easy to wake up in the morning to make Salat al-Fajr. It's not easy to, you know, it's cold and you want to make wudu. It's not easy to walk to the masjid. I mean, you really need strength, even bodily speaking, no? to, so I find that a lot of like the ummah majority not we are suffering from lack of exercise lack of eating properly which is kind of uh, you know uh, sarcastic speaking you know it's it's weird because we are the ones who should be supposed to, you, <laughs> you know, know ironically speaking we are the ones who should be the best the most fit <laughs> the most healthy uh, eating the best food but we're not and you know like say for example in south africa if you pass some of the suburbs You'll be surprised. Like, mm. say, for example, I remember when we used to go to school in the mornings, and you pass some of the suburbs of the uh, of the normal people, not uh, not even Muslims, you know, passing their suburbs in that. You find them in the gardens, in Doing the open things. parks, you know, exercising. They're, they're exercising. Yeah. The old people are taking walks on the road, you know. Some of the youngsters are having a morning run, you know, and it it, it, it makes you think. <laughs> have spilled over onto the escalated into violent clashes between police and protesters over the government's plan to avoid default and we're also hearing of injuries on both journalist charlie mcgrath says the cuts will heap further suffering on ordinary people for decades but defense needs some this is a serious and big storm join me as i explore issues pressing issues facing the Muslim world today. From the one-sided civil war in Syria to the genocide in Burma, from the Arab Spring to the elections in the US, and yes, even the Euro debt crisis in Greece. Honest reporting on a channel you can trust, and I won't leave an issue untouched. Don't miss the Ummah tonight with me, Malik, on your favorite channel for the TV. <laughs> Subhanallah, we as Muslims are supposed to be first in this, you know, we're supposed to be the ones that are first in exercising, keeping healthy, eating healthy food, uh, vegetables, checking your body, you know, all these things because these are the, 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 this is the most important thing for a person because if you had a full meal, you know, and you, if you ate full, it will be, hard, you, to wake it up will be hard to wake up in the morning. If you had a full lunch, it will be hard to recite the, 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 the afternoon salah, the, the dhuar salah, you know. If you had a big a supper, you're still waiting to have your dessert, have nice you know. Big so mac <laughs> and this, a nice two big so mac, not one. Basically, two. like uh, all these things count. The inner, inner spirituality, a person needs to work from inside. He needs to, basically, it's, the inner spirituality is connected to the desires, mm. you know, basically. So cutting... Trampling upon the desires, it takes time, it takes effort, it's, it works, you, you work it slowly, slowly. It seems the like outer spirituality, it's a person right. needs to exercise, he needs to run, needs to eat healthy, you know, needs to do things 
that can make his body, you know, that when the time of salah comes, or when anything is, you know, if brothers come and say to him, you know what, let's go and let's go to this place. There's a there's a person giving a lecture. You ready? Mm -hmm. You know, you're always ready for, for for good deeds and that. So basically, these things work hand in hand, you know. So basically, we have inner, we have outer, and Islam balance that we should, but we're not there. Uh, it seems like we're stuck somewhere in between. That you know, our spirituality is not at its high where it should be. And in the physical aspect, we're also lacking. We're somewhere in limbo, you know. Yeah, we're and just I like don't know hanging. what we're like. You know, it's like kind of like we we like dunya, but we're not really living fully for it, or we're like somewhere you know below it. And you know, we understand that we should be doing this for our akhirah and for our spirit, but we're just you know kind of away from it. So we're somewhere mm -hmm. like uh, in the middle. Uh, now another amazing point that uh, subhanallah going back to the spiritual aspect to the inside and again to the laziness and uh, lack of commitment in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I, I feel that uh, we don't really know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we don't know who we're worshiping therefore we don't feel some kind of dire need to you know to, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah that is totally true because like I've heard the one scholar who mentioned he said that uh, if you do deeds which are against the commands of Allah SWT, it means that you haven't recognized who Allah SWT is. Because the moment you recognize who is Allah, the power of Allah, what Allah has commanded us to do, the beautiful sunnah that Nabi SAW came awesome. with, as soon as you realize these things, Allah, it becomes difficult for you to sin. Sure. And another thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, Islam has balanced out everything. Sure. The moment you go extreme, the moment you go overboard, Islam becomes difficult. What do I mean? Sure. Islam is balanced. They keep your body healthy, feed the inner soul. So that why? You could wake up in the morning. You could wake up for Fajr. The moment you don't balance your body, Islam becomes a burden upon okay. you. SubhanAllah. Because now when the uh, Adhan goes for Salah, you're like, oh man, SubhanAllah, it, I have to recite the Salah because why? I'm going to get punished. Let me just go quickly to the mosque. When you come into the, to, into the masjid, the Imam, you know, he recites a long, uh, a long verse. You're like, oh man, when is he going to finish with this verse? You're not concentrating in your salah. You're not concentrating when you came to the masjid. You didn't perform the, 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 the you didn't read uh, the, 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 the dua for coming into the masjid. You know, so all these things count. And so, so sooner or later, it becomes a burden for you on doing good deeds. You know, so this is, this is the, what we need to look at as youth. You know, we need to look at what are the harms of not, you know, uh, building that inner spirituality and building that outer spirituality of killing this laziness of right. the body, you know. So it's very important that we try and balance in order so that Islam, that's why they say when, when, when you balance, then Iman becomes sweet like honey. Sweet like honey. And you know, uh, doing, good, uh, doing good deeds become enjoying to you, you know. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's almost like you're reviving yourself, you know. And you, you're getting like, like, like you know, you, you're getting like food. Well, uh, that, that is reviving you and assisting you on uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another aspect that I feel, another point that is very important is the, you know, we are so, today living in the 21st century, we live in a very, you know, um, uh, society is very materialistic, right? And everything is based on either technology, a cell phone, material things, things that can be, you know, touched that we rely upon machines, computers, and so on. And we are so disconnected from nature. Right? And hence, our hearts are disconnected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you can see in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can see, uh, you know, reflects His attributes. Again, going back to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And we, you know, we rely upon the, the, the wahi that we have, you know, sending text messages, and <laughs> this is a form of, you know, it's like uh, why, you know, inspiration. It's not a divine why, yeah. but we're so much on the Twitter and Facebook and WhatsApp why and text messages. Yet we are not paying attention to the why, the Quran, and you know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has has revealed for. And again, that laziness comes in. That you know, we need to find something, you know, tangible right away that we can touch or we can move or we can. We can play with to to be somehow motivated, right? If you get a text message right away from your friends, you know, you see it, you read it, you know, there is something right there, and you're gonna move, right? You're gonna be somehow motivated to go and meet them or do something, right? Subhanallah. Today we find people are reading the Quran or they're they're you know there's a dars or something like that, and they're kind of like yeah, you know, that's yeah. nice. You find a guy like he's in, he's listening to he's reading Quran, 
his phone is next to him. Someone tweets him or beeps him, you know. He's like checking. He has the Quran. <laughs> like, which know, one? <laughs> uh, there's a lecture. You know, he comes into the... Uh, how many times you really concentrating? The, the imam is reciting so beautifully. And then all of a sudden you just hear someone's phone ringing. You know, so just kills it. <laughs> it. It just shows you. And today, if you go into the court, you find at the court they say, please put your phones on silence, right. you know. Everybody obeys it. Right. Because they know if your phone rings in the court, you either get a fine or you'll be taken out of the court immediately. Hmm. You know? Right. But if a person knew, this is another thing, laziness. You become so lazy that your body becomes lazy and your mind becomes lazy. You become so lazy to pull out your phone from your pocket and just put it on silence. Same. It becomes a laziness because why? You know, and how important is that? How many people, I mean, in the masjid yeah. that you've disturbed the salah and that you know, so, this. Point. so we're talking about, again, about the lack of commitment of the ummah, the youth specifically, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's, there's a, you know, a downgrade in our, in our worship, in the quality of our worship. Type really fast before we uh, finish this episode. What, what are some of the tips or advices that we can give I mean, to ourselves, to our brothers, to to. We mentioned it while we were speaking, and you know, we'll just draw Some from what we would just yeah, draw. Past. Basically, from my side, I would say to the youth, to anybody who wants to start off small, you know, mm. don't start off big, don't try and be a person that's going to Keep burn, steady, burn the, 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 you know, there's normally they say burn the carpet, you right? Know? So uh, don't, don't exert yourself, don't go okay. extreme. Okay. Start Next. off small. Try and keep it steadfast on, on whatever small uh, that you have started with. That is one point. Mm -hmm. Number two is that we always say, and this is the most important, the inner, you know, that, 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 that saying to yourself, keep on reminding yourself that I have a target and this is my goal and I want to reach this year, you know. Keep on motivating yourself. Mm. You know, if you read books of motivation and that, you will find most of the scholars and most of the writers in, 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 in books of motivation, they say, a person should always motivate himself. They said up to the extent when a person feels down, he should go to the shop, buy him a chocolate, <laughs> and give it to himself <laughs> as a present. You right, know, so subhanAllah, it is important yeah. that stimulate and motivate Mashallah. yourself. You know, Mashallah. that's the second. And number three, always take note hmm. of what has is there any changes. Take note. Hmm. That is the third thing. You know, like how you find have a diary hmm. and so. say that okay, this week put out your weeks, your days. Mm. and say subhanallah you know like count your days and see on the days that are you improving or is it is there decrease and subhanallah this is you know the, this is how you start off Mashallah. and subhanallah automatically it becomes a part mm. of your life and Mashallah. it becomes your habit Mashallah. as from my side uh, just two points as i said uh, to know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to know to be able Very to important. worship to be have good quality worship to have uh, any a beautiful relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and this goes through seek knowledge and last point is we should be connected with nature we should understand where our food comes from who we are what is our nature what is nature from us and so on oh Lord to you I pray bow down prostrate you are the only one worthy of praise I stand before you with an attentive heart Erase my sins from the present and past To you I pray, bow down prostrate You are the only one worthy of praise I stand before you with an attentive heart Erase my sins from the present and past I surrender to you, I entrust all of my affairs to you, I depend on you for your blessings too, both with hope and fear of you, there is no fleeing.